Hey, I'm out here in Wabo, Papua New Guinea this morning. This is my second flight down here today. Just a 25 minute flight back up to Goroka. It's super cloudy out. We've got rain, well, we did at least on the way down here and on the way back up last time. So I'm expecting some rain on the way. Super cloudy, when we get up to Goroka, I think it's clearing. So let's go ahead and jump in. I don't have any passengers. I just brought two loads of passengers down here and took one back up to Goroka. This one's empty. It's a nice day, so let's go. Well, Brad just left here just a few minutes ago in his Kodiak on his way back. He's done for the day. This is my last flight Toss for the day. system test. Okay. Okay. All right, we've got 650 pounds of fuel. So I've got all my seats on board. Minus 18 kgs of equipment. I don't have anything except maybe like 8 kgs or so in the second pod. So I'm looking here, over here, it's usually kg, but you can hit kg and it turns to pounds. So we can put our cargo in here at 20 pounds. Cruise 210, fuel 650, gross weight 5346. Within 10 here. So for takeoff, we've got 54 and 63. So 63 knots if we have to come back in and 54 for rotate. Going all the way up to 11,000, worst case today. And I will put on this map. All right, we are the blue dot down here and we are gonna be coming up here and then kind of wiggling our way through some valleys just because like there's clouds, rain, things like that and then getting up to Garoka. So let's see how this goes. Let's go ahead and start. Fuel is on. Ox pump, ox pump and igniters on. All oh, these are back and low start. I watch my engine first, over 14%. We'll introduce our fuel. Low pressure's coming up now. Fuel flow's coming in. ITT's coming up at a nice slow rate. And it all peaks out at 652. Prop four generator, alternator. Not sure what he's waving at, but okay. <laughs> okay, he's giving me the thumbs up. I'm not sure why. <laughs> switches and instruments. Okay, all of our switches. Let's throw our strobe, our landing, and our pulse light on. We've got bypass right here up to 11,000, on the altimeter. Our flaps are set. Indicated at 20, and we're going to verify that they're both at 20, which they are. That is a killer in this airplane if you don't have it right. Mars V6598, November Tango Echo Taxi. November Tango Echo, motion good. November Tango Echo Taxi, Wabo, Garoka, 1 POV. November Tango Echo, loaded for the traffic. November Tango Echo. All stations, Wabo 1209 or November Tango Echo, back taxiing for departure, Garoka. Wabo. All stations, Wabo 1285, November Tango Echo, back taxiing for departure, Garoka. All stations, Wabo. All right, the reason I had to give two calls is Today it's not busy. Clear on the left, clear on the right. Definitely the clouds are coming in and filling in. My last flight down here, we had lots of blue sky, and I see zero blue sky now. I was hoping to get some drone footage, some updated drone footage of this place for you guys, but I forgot to log in on my account, which means it only goes about 15 feet away, so. I'll remember to do that for next time. I got the fuck up once you get. There's no cell phone, cell phone coverage out here. I got the fuck up.
Well, it's not nearly as wet and muddy as last time I came out here a couple weeks ago. So I'm picking these guys up. Ignition inlets and lights are done. Our harnesses are done. Our hide all and go. We've already done our governor check today, and we've already done our takeoff lines for here. 30 degrees out, well, 31 degrees out, and 15 and 90s were at sea level, 100 feet. We're going all the way up to 9,000 feet over these mountains. So 1540, 1590, go 50 below because I'm in bypass as I'm. I'll set my torque, I'm sorry, my ITT around 720 as I'm on my roll. By the time airborne and going faster, it'll bring it away from 740 for takeoff. So ignition, condition, flaps, and we fuel and harnesses. Plus is complete. Things are so handy for takeoff and landing. All right, let's go. 1540, rotate, 54. Alright, torque is set, airspeed is alive. There is 54 up and off. We're at 720 right now. Haven't changed anything and it's slowly kind of creeping up. 725 now, so I could bump it up a little bit up to 740. Alright, once we're over 300 feet. And over 85 knots, we'll go 10 degrees of laps. We'll go to zero degrees of laps now that we're at 100 knots. Now I'm determining how I'm going to get out of here. I've got mountains up to 4,000 over here. Actually, I'm closer up to 6,000. We can do an IFR departure just through the clouds because there's nothing out here. Just lowering terrain. I see a decently sized hole over here and a little bit of blue sky as well. So let's get my prop on back to 2000 RPM. We've got a hole here, but it's really not a big enough hole for me to be able to climb up. So let's go ahead and clean up after our takeoff. Landing light, bypass, and our igniter's off. I head over here to this hole first. That hole is really nice, and it looks like this layer is just maybe like a 7 8 broken layer. Uh, around a thousand feet, but it looks like it's only about 500 feet thick. I'm gonna jet out here and then start my climb up pretty quick just because I'm already going 135 knots so I can really pitch for our best angle or best climb. Best angle is gonna be 73 knots. The best climb is gonna be 99 knots. All right, yeah, look at that. So fair enough. So let's pitch on up. Bring our climb power up to 720 for the climb, or right at the absolute top of my green on my torque. 1790. Now it's dropping down the higher we get. I was thinking on the way out here, a couple years back, as I started flying here in Papua New Guinea, and days like this would really stress me out because for one, I was VFR only. And I didn't know what the weather does. I didn't know what my options uh, were. Very stressful. And I'll get more to that here in a minute. Mars V6598, November Tango Echo departure. November Tango Echo, mostly good. November Tango Echo departed. Wabo, time 40, tracking 014 on climb below 11,000. Estimating Garoka 05. November Tango Echo below 11,000. Noted for the traffic. No, but I'm playing like a... So days like these are really difficult to really know where you are because, like you guys can see below us, we've got so many clouds that are covering up ridge tops that you would typically use for identifying where you are. I mean, you do have your charts, obviously, but right now, without a chart, all I have is like clouds in front of me. Like, I don't see one ridge top anywhere. If you had to fly just strictly pilotage, I fly the majority pilotage here. Because I was just thinking, you know, as a 
as a person who is very spatial, like it'd be very, very difficult flying a Papua New Guinea if you were not spatial. It'd be very difficult. All right, well, let's go ahead and just climb on up. We know we have to be at least 9,500 feet for these mountains up here in about 20 miles. We're at 6,700 feet. All I'm seeing is kind of a darker blue up there. I'm hoping that I'll start seeing some ridges here in a minute because that will indicate that I can make it. Can you check higher weather? If good, I can make one more trip. Okay, that's from Brad. Let's go over to Haya and take a look. All right, here we are. We're going over here to Haya, and we're just going to check the weather for Brad. Because we've got four flights to Haya tomorrow. I do two, he does two, I think. That's how it's working. If he can get one of them done today, that's great. That's just autopilot off. I just flip autopilot on every once in a while, just while I'm moving things around. I always prefer to hand fly if I can. And Unless I have passengers and then I just always use autopilot because they can fly better than I can. Well, let's level off here at 8,000. Bring our torque on back because there's no point in wasting fuel. As I'm pulling the power back, I'm also pushing on the left rudder, like kind of gradually. As I'm pulling, I'm pushing harder and harder because now we don't have all that power in, giving us all those P factors that are wanting to pull the airplane to the left. Basically what I'm doing is I'm just now starting to remove the right rudder pressure that I had in my climb. I've got rain out here. I am barely starting to see some ridges through the clouds over there. I think that's my highest point. for maintaining like I was saying earlier, when I first started here, days like this were extremely stressful. Because, I mean, if you just look forward, you see absolutely no ridges. And if you don't really know how the weather really kind of sticks to the mountains, it's very stressful if you can't see anything or you don't know, like, what you're looking for. Do you guys want to fly this same flight? I nearly dropped my iPad. I'll post this on my Patreon page. I'll post a screenshot of my track. You can follow along with it. I've got Wobble available, I believe, for X-Plane as well as Microsoft Flight Sim on my Patreon page where you can just add in as a patch and then fly the exact same route that I am. Okay, and I'm a Fox truck and even make the weather like this too. I'm pretty sure you can on those. And also, as a Patreon member or an E3 member, you also get extra, like, exclusive content as I walk around these places. A lot of times, if I have time, I'll shoot an on-the-ground video for you guys. Sometimes, even if I have time, I'll walk through the village, things like that. Most days, I'm usually in a hurry to get all my flying done. Because I'm uh, rushing against weather or just a matter of getting all my flights done. But I do like to share these kind of places with you because MPNG is so unique and, and most people have really no experience or know anything really about Papua New Guinea. We'll just start a slow descent. And then I think rather than going back the way I've been coming out here, we'll go a different way. It's a lower route, and as long as the weather is going to permit me to do that, we'll go that way. It's a different gap. Basically, there's a big mountain right out there with 9,000 foot ridges there and 6,000 foot ridges there. So these ones typically plug up kind of in the afternoon, usually by noon. I mean, it's noon almost now. But today, because it's so stable, it's just cloudy and drizzly rain everywhere. But it's not building, where most days you could go that way by now. You'd have to go this way. So that's kind of what I was saying earlier. So if you don't know these different options and you get down here, it's so stressful going, I don't know how I'm going to get home. All right, Haya is about five miles out, straight ahead of us. Right there, possibly. There's two runways that are almost identical valleys. And I think that's, I think that's Haya. And if so, it definitely looks like he could probably get in here. Well, I'll text him here in a minute. All right, so I know on base you go between two hills, and that looks the same. Uh, 
Oh, you guys will, will all see. I don't even see it right now. It's right below these clouds right here. All right, that is 1.6 miles. So yeah, that has to be it. Okay, yeah, it looks like the whole circuit is open. I mean, there's clouds all the way up over top of it, but that's not really an issue, though. Yeah, I mean, it looks really wet, but I mean, the circuit looks to be open enough. All right, let's throw autopilot on and climb up a little bit. Hi, uh, weather good. Autopilot off. Let's climb up over these clouds right here. And let's throw our terrain on, because there's so many clouds, and now it quickly shows me right where the Mayamafu Gap is, which is right there. I don't normally fly with terrain on unless it stays like this. But on days like this, oh, it is a really big help. All right, let's go 720 and climb up a little bit quicker. 720 on the ITT. All right, I'm seeing over these, I'm seeing some ridges out there, which is good. That's towards Karamui. I had people on Waba wanting to go to Karamui, but I wasn't able to take them today because I have no idea how good or bad the weather is. So I don't want to pick them up, fly all the way up there to find out, nope, doesn't work. And then have to fly all the way back. Okay, here is the gap. Not looking awesome, but We'll stick our nose up there and see what it looks like. Well, lots of clouds though, that's for sure. We've got a big, huge, whatever, 11, 12,000 foot mountain right over here in these clouds. Lowering kind of terrain going out that way. We've got a big valley and then another ridge on the other side of the valley, which is those other red and yellow marks. So I kind of need to make an S turn, kind of go in and come out about eight miles or so. This is looking really plugged up because I'm not even to the gap yet. Yeah, I don't think it's going to work going this way. I am seeing these ridges, but those are the mountains that go right here, and I'm not seeing into the next valley. Or am I? Oh, well, actually, I think I am seeing into the next valley. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to slow on down. Give myself time to think. Push the prop forward. 10 degrees of flaps below 138. I'm going to slow down to 80-20. Yeah, I can see better with my sunglasses. Twenty degrees of flaps. If this doesn't work, we'll have to turn around, head out that way. It looks like I can see through into the next valley, though. Might look different on camera, I don't know, but... Hey, so my out, I'm coming in at a 45. My out's out here to the left. Uh, I'm seeing ridges through the valley on the other side. Which is an indication that it's good. It looks like a potential kind of drizzly rain and stuff. Check my winds real quick. Four knots behind me. 7,000. I'm seeing good ridges for quite a ways all the way on these yellow mountains over here. So that's another good probably four or five miles out. That means the valley is going to be wide enough for me to get in there, safely maneuver. If for some reason I had to come back out through this gap. Our pause is turned off, our train awareness. All right, this is looking comfortable enough to get through. So I'm committing myself now, we're going through. And winds are the same.
like I said, I need to get out going that way here in a minute. All right, winds are still the same. Now, if you've never flown this route, I've flown this route probably 50 times or more, then I would not be doing this, that's for sure. Right. I'm expecting some pretty strong winds coming around this corner eventually because coming down to Wabo had like almost 30 knot crosswind. Okay, I'm seeing out a good easy 10 miles, so let's go 10 degrees of flaps. Let's bring our power back in, speed back up. Go ahead and bring our prop back to 2000 RPM and go zero degrees of flaps. We've got, I wouldn't say a good 10 miles visibility, but I have 10 miles visibility. And it's looking even better towards Garoka, so let's get this thing trimmed out. Our torque on back to 1250 for cruise. 0187 at 15 miles, Mark Alpha Fox. Hello, Matango Echo, 15 miles, Garoka, contact Garoka, 118, station 7. 117, 15 miles, Mark Alpha Hotel. I thought that was for me. I thought he said never bring echo, but then somebody else chimed in, so I don't have a playback button on my HF radio, unfortunately. All right, let's just go ahead and throw our engine in and let bypass. Rain's picking up just a little bit. Not very much. I mean, it still just sprinkles, but in case I forget. So this is where the terrain map is super helpful. I mean, I know that I can fly this exact route here like 5,500 feet all the way back to Garoka. We're at 7,000 nearly. But I can also see kind of now exactly where the terrain is. If for some reason the clouds are sitting on all the, like over here, they're sitting on all the ridges and you don't see anything. Um, I'm going to have to give him a revised. Morsby 65, 9 or 8, November Tango Echo. November Tango Echo, revised estimate Garoka time 1 2. Number 10, Garoka, Roger. Copy, revised, 1, 2, Garoka. Traffic, Mike, Alpha, Fox, Road, Cessna, Caravan, Simba, for Garoka. Attack, 1, 3, 0. Narva, 1, 1,000. Estimate, Garoka, 0, 2, 1, 7. Copy, Mike, Alpha, Hotel, November 10, Garoka. There's a Foxtrot. Well, there are many planes, so... I know where Simba is, and I know where Garoka is. Well, this is what the Windy app was forecasting for the day kind of progressively getting kind of drizzly, more drizzly, more cloudy as the day went on. Another thing that gets really difficult is when there is rain on your windshield and there's rain in these valleys here, the mountains just kind of disappear into like this gray mush. So really really thinking if you want to continue on in rain and mountains especially when you have mountains that are as high as you or even higher than you these two here are higher than me this one is a little bit higher than me over there and really kind of gauging the how hard it's raining and do I need to get on one of my IFR routes which is up to like 11,000 feet right here which will get me straight over there but days also like this, because it is a really stable environment, the clouds don't really move very much, the rain doesn't really pick up very quickly, it's just a kind of a gradual up or down. And I can also see that ridge line way out there on the distance, that's the ridge line that goes into Garoka. So if I'm already seeing that really clearly and it's not covered with clouds, I can see that my gap down here to the Osaro South is open and it's clear up there. It's not getting darker. That's an indication that the rain's going to be stopping here in a little bit. I should look out that way for Brad. Yeah, he can head out that way. Jump over the ridge. And that will work fine for him. There is some rain. But again, I think that he could probably get out the high and back at least one trip if he really wants to today. I'm waiting for tomorrow to finish my flights. <laughs> All right, so it should start slowing down on the rain here just really shortly up here. 
I'll we'll throw engine inlet back to normal now that it's starting to pitter out. I like days like this when it's a really stable, cloudy, rainy day like this. I used to hate them. But I like, I actually really like them now because it makes you think more. Rather than just going in a straight line on the magenta, you know, brick road, it's really nice because you have to kind of think of like, how, how am I going to do, how am I going to get back where I need to get? The most efficient yet safest way at the same time. There you go. Now it's clearing right up. Let's just hold our 7,000 feet that we have here. Might as well just throw autopilot on and just track for the mountains straight ahead of me. It's just below 7,000, like 6,800 something. Once I get to the top of that, that's where I start my descent down into Garoka. Good Let's go ahead and we'll be doing 17,000. We'll be uh, back on track by Lublin. Put in our Garoka Tower. Garoka Tower, November Tango Echo. November Alpha Tango, standby break. November Tango Echo, Garoka Tower, go ahead. November Tango Echo, one five miles to the southwest, 7,000. Your circuit, one two. November Tango Echo. Uh, runway three five right, track uh, four left base, report at the place. Traffic November Alpha Tango, they said lining up uh, one turn right this time will be departing shortly. Track for left base, 35 right. November Tango Echo, copy departing traffic. November Alpha Tango, uh, runway 17 right, uh, make left then. Clear for takeoff. 17 right, left turn, good takeoff, November Alpha Tango. Alright, well, that airplane's gonna be well out of my way before I get there in another five minutes, so. Oh man, that waterfall is beautiful. That thing is huge. And I'd love to hike out there, that'd be cool. Well, we can go ahead and put our altitude select bug down to basically turning final, 5600, 5700, somewhere right in there. I typically turn more kind of closer to 5700. Let's get our landing weight of 5,100 feet, or 5,100 feet, 5,100 pounds, so 61 knots at the absolute slowest, but I'm not going to come in that slow. Probably November come in. Tango Echo, uh, traffic November Alpha Tango is on the left then now. And uh, this stage uh, U1 number one, ahead of uh, Mike Alpha Fox Road, uh, inbound uh, from the north, tracking for left down wind this time. Uh, track of final, support final. Track of port final, 35 right, now over Tango Echo. I don't know why. Fox shot, uh, you'll be number two behind uh, November Tango Echo. Copy, number two behind Michael for Fox shot. I don't know why they call it finals here, but they do. Not every time, just sometimes. All right, we well, can OBS it just for you guys' sake so you guys can see where the runway is. Right there. And it puts a nice big line right there, so help me line up for a final for five miles. We're pretty much five miles now. We're going to torque on back at around 450. Yeah, Tango Echo joining four mile final, 35 right. November Tango Echo, runway 35 right. Good man. Clear to land, 35 right. November Tango Echo. Now back off for Fox Trot is left down when 435. We have the landing traffic inside. My Gulf of Foxtrot, uh, your sweet traffic, follow behind as number two. Follow behind number two, my Gulf of Foxtrot. Alright, we'll shoot to land around the 500 foot marker. Sometimes if you land just a little bit past it, it's a little bit of a, run, a landing because the runway kind of dips down right there. Alright, 500 My Gulf of Foxtrot, Q units now 1020. 1020, my Gulf of Foxtrot. A bit fast, so I'm gonna probably float a little bit further than I'm wanting to. Just gotta start bleeding my speed off way up here. All right, we are continuing.
I got a Foxtrot uh, runway 35 left, clear to land. Clear to land, 35 left, Mike Alpha Foxtrot. Oh, it looks like Brad is filling up. Probably to do one of those highs, it looks like. Thanks, guys, for joining. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I did. Like I said, if you want to fly that same route on uh, one of your flight simulators, check out my Patreon page under the commercial tier. I've got almost 100 different flights all around Papua New Guinea. The bunch of runways also that you can add to your game as well that don't come with it normally. That's it. Too easy. All right, guys. See you next time. Thanks for watching.